Hello and welcome to the discussion of battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles. My name is Bruce Harrison and I am an Associate Director here at IHS Global Insights Automotive Group. I am joined today by Mr. Phil Gott, who is Director for Automotive Consulting, and more importantly to today's discussion, he is primarily responsible for advanced automotive science and technology here at IHS Global Insight. Thanks for joining me today, Phil. Pleasure, Bruce. So let's get right to it. Uh, what's the background behind the current global enthusiasm for electric vehicles? Governments around the world look at uh, electric vehicles as the, one of the several solutions to the challenges that uh, face the provision of personal mobi mobility uh, in the face of uh, concentrations of fossil resources in other parts of the world and urban air pollution. Now, we've seen similar enthusiasm for a variety of technologies before. Uh, everything from diesels in the U.S., 42 volts, fuel cells, hydrogen, uh, and now the electric vehicle. What makes this time any different, or is it any different? Really good question, Bruce, uh, and that's really the, at, the, at the crux of the, the issue. Electric vehicles have been around for 100 years. They've been in continuous production, although not for over-the-road use in, in most cases. And so the real question is, is it really worth investing uh, in those technologies now, or are they going to be yet another flash in the pan? And that's really the heart of a multi-client study that we're doing uh, entitled uh, Battery Electric and Plug-in Hybrid Vehicles. Uh, what is the real business case? Now, uh, in order to have some sort of an adoption for an electric vehicle, I assume that you expect some sort of a lifestyle change. Is that accurate? Well, uh, it's true that electric vehicles um, have a uh, much shorter range than a liquid-fueled gasoline or diesel vehicle, and it takes a lot longer to uh, recharge them. Uh, technology will uh, extend the range and reduce the recharge time, but they'll never really be competitive on an equal basis with liquid-fueled vehicles. So we have to consider how we would incorporate them into our lifestyle. They make an excellent urban vehicle. Uh, by that I mean they're great for short distances. They're great where the limitations of the battery are irrelevant. And that's really for short trips where the vehicle can maybe go from one station to another and be plugged in whenever it's parked. That makes the most sense uh, in fleets of leased vehicles where the parking spaces are owned by a, a leasing company. And you or I as apartment dwellers or city dwellers don't have to put up with a nuisance of, of owning a car, parking it, moving it from one spot to another during s snowstorms or emergencies or whatever. And then if we wanted to uh, have a vehicle to go to the mountains or the shore on the weekends, we just rent a larger, maybe a liquid-fueled car for those long-distance travel. Okay, so there would be some required lifestyle change. Are there any real uh, technology roadblocks that would, would appear um, related to the electric vehicle? Well, again, um, we've, we've been producing electric vehicles for a long time. The real challenge is making the battery cost-effective making it uh, conducive uh, to the, uh, the, li the way the consumer wants to use the vehicle. Uh, it's still, despite the hundred years of development, still early days uh, in uh, the battery world. We're, we're talking about uh, now lithium-based uh, batteries, where lithium is the electrolyte. Uh, a lot of the chemists say lithium is not the end result, but it's the next stepping stone. Uh, at MIT, there's been some uh, work in bio uh, develop batteries. Uh, recently some of the Obama uh, stimulus money was awarded to a, a company out in Ann Arbor, Michigan that's making a solid state battery. Most batteries have a, um, a uh, liquid-like slush as the electrolyte. Uh, this battery is totally solid state, very much like a transistor. So it's still early days and uh, if we can get electric vehicles uh, kicked off, get significant volumes of them, that's further stimulus to drive battery R&D and also bring the cost down, which is one of the other major barriers. I see. Now, electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, they've been researched by many other organizations out, out in the marketplace today. What makes the IHS Global Insights study uh, that you're undertaking so much different? Well, it's, it's very true, and what we've designed our study to be is complementary to those that are available from supplier business and, and other companies. Uh, what we're really trying to do is look at the business case. Are the electric vehicles really going to take off now? What's required? What's the path for commercialization? Will some of the concerns that people have raised, limitations of materials, uh, perhaps um, a limitations in the electric power grid, 
are those real concerns or are they red herrings? And what we're trying to do is look at those and, and determine if this really makes good business sense. So essentially you're, you're looking at the risks that kind of go into it. So in short, I guess anyone considering the wisdom of investment and resources into electric vehicles and the plug-in hybrid field should incorporate the findings of this study into the decision making and business planning process. Absolutely. Thank you for joining me today, Phil. I'm Bruce Harrison, and thank you for joining us.